Hey amigos, good to see you again. This is the next day since the last video that I uploaded where... What did I do on that last video? Oh, now I forgot. Oh yeah, my third year review of my soft tail. We're owning an Evo since I did that trade with my twin cam for a Evo soft tail. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. I'm going to pick up where I left off with the clutch discs. There's my clutch hub hanging on a push rod. Last time you saw the clutch discs hanging on a push rod. But they're right here. They're all good and drip dried. And so nothing else left to do other than put it together. So I'm going to put this camera down. I'm not going to film me putting it together because there's already a video out there of me doing that. But I'll just pick it up later when I get to a stopping point And then uh, we'll see what happens. I'm doing this to see if this solves my issue with the thing wanting to lunge forward. As I said in the other video, one of these fingers is out of place. So my clutch discs were not flowing freely, that is, whenever I have the clutch disengaged. So uh, I'm gonna put this together and we'll see what happens. Okay, I changed my mind a little bit about the filming part, but I got my clutch up all put together, got the bearings on it, got the retainer plate in, there it is with those springs holding it on. I thought I might record this. I found a really easy way to, to as far as a technique goes, as far as putting your clutch hub onto the main shaft, you know, with the whole Woodruff key thing without knocking the key out of place. Well, this is what I've done. All right, making sure my keyway is at the 12 o'clock position like the Woodruff key is. And I just put it on the shaft, take a good look at it, make sure it's in line. I tilt it up just a little bit like this, and then I go forward. And check it out. It went on the first time. That's pretty simple. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these pieces parts on here. And uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right. Got my clutches in there. And I've got my spring tension adjusted the best I could. Everything went in there together just like as I would want it to. All i got to do now is, you know, tighten the belt up. Put on my primary cover and see how well everything works. Maybe it works out the way I want it to. This shovel's been throwing me curveballs ever since I've had it for a better part of a year now almost. No, almost a year. It's been fun, you know. I know I got accused, or well not accused, but one of you in the comments on the last video said something about us younger guys looking for the older machines that the older guys had to endure the frustrations of because we think it's cool to do that. Not really trying to be cool. I don't know why I like this, but I do. It's definitely not a better machine than some of my other machines, but it's just is what it is. I'm gonna call it better. I can see why Harley did some improvements, you know, like this clutch system is really not as good as the diaphragm spring clutch system. Maybe that's my opinion, but it's just an easier setup on the Evos and the twin cams. And also what else? And this is the part where you guys who have been around since the shovel came out and you came up on these bikes, this is the part where you can go ahead and enter your negative and hateful comments for me saying what I'm saying right now. But it's just my experience, okay? I'm just being honest. But I will say I really like this bike still, and it's still the bike I find myself gravitating towards when I want to go ride. Okay, so I hope that helps. Oh, yeah, the starter systems, you know, the electric start system on these old bikes. An inferior system compared to what we have today where we have everything in one unit and it's tight this is probably the third solenoid up stuck on here second jack shaft with starter clutch and the second starter motor i've put in it you know yada 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 so i'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this put together and we'll see how it goes okay i got everything i'll put back together uh, the belt is adjusted i got the clutches adjusted the best i could for what I could do. Primary is all back together. The only thing that's not in this place is the battery so that in case if the starter sticks, I can unhook the battery real quick. So anyway, let's see what happens. All right, we have power on the gas, on the richener. There we go. Well, it looks like it works. Now to get it back onto the ground and, you know, see how the clutch works. OK, 
Okay, forgot my gloves. I'm just in such a hurry to try this thing out that I'm forgetting my gloves. And it is chilly outside. I haven't changed the oil yet. It's got 70 weight oil in it, but I did let it warm up. So maybe it'll be okay. I strapped a leather glove to the oil cooler. So, you know, it's probably a good 45 degrees out here. forward I can dig that a little bit of a, a bump but not bad oh man it feels so good to be on this thing again yes definitely got to change that rear sprocket again it sure doesn't have a whole lot of takeoff power with that 48 Oh yeah, and I forgot about the crappy brakes. <laughs> oh well. Oh golly, I think I also committed a mortal sin too. I forgot to uh, bring me some tools. Yeah, it definitely does not like this cold weather with 70 weight oil in it. So, I think before I end up blowing out the weakest seal or gasket, it may be a good idea for me to turn around real soon and get back to the house. As soon as I find a parking lot somewhere. Oh cool, I can test out the clutch up here at this church parking lot. Okay, I'll turn around up here. The turn signals quit working on this thing a while back. So, who needs turn signals, right? <laughs> on an old bike. This bike's had enough character already to where it kind of doesn't really even matter. Let's see if we can hear them clutches. Oh yeah. Alright, here we go. Oh yeah, so much better. Yeah, this thing, like... When I would take off from first, this thing would act like I was dumping the clutch. It would like, boom, like that. I guess that's part of shovel heading, having old bikes, that kind of stuff. If I remember right, 3,000 RPM is 70. I don't know if this car up here sees me. Yeah, apparently he does. Or it might have something to do with it. I have my headlight on. Yeah, the valves are clattering bottom end just has too much of a load on it with this sprocket so I think 51 teeth on the back is good enough I mean why the heck do I want to go 70 miles an hour anyway on this thing when I got crappy brakes you know what I mean Look, about to dump it in my own driveway okay we have an oily mess. Oh shoot, look at that. Puked out oil at the first startup. They do that if you let them sit long enough. Stay out, cold weather. Well, success. All right, the clutch works a lot better. So the next order of business, I'm gonna do an oil change on this thing. I'm not gonna record that, but I don't know what I'm gonna record next. But this video isn't over, I don't guess. Let's see what's next. Okay, it's now a week later and I'm not done filming this video, obviously, because I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> but I'll show you what I have been doing. Check this out. Remember the motorcycle that I said that was in this garage that you could not see? Here it is, coming into fruition. Pretty cool to have that motor right there in that frame. And I got a gas tank for it. And the more I look around in this garage, I'm finding more and more stuff to make that an actual running motorcycle. I am so glad to see this thing sitting in this setup. So that is going to be an adventurous build. I always like it when there's something to do. And there's going to be lots of headaches and there's going to be lots of... Um, well, maybe not. It's just going to be a fun thing to do. I mean, check it out. I even got a set of fork tubes and sliders that I bought off of the internet about a couple of years ago. I finally unwrapped them yesterday and you know some knuckle brain decided to paint them black so i've been taking a little bit of steel wool and just knocking the black paint off of them and they could probably stand to have new seals and bushings put in them so that's one thing that's going to go in there oh and by the way you guys are not going to believe um i gotta tell you something but i'll tell you that something um <laughs> after this battery charges back up and boom check it out with a little bit of steel wool and some elbow grease. 
it was a little time consuming but the paint came off relatively easy apparently it was not the best paint to use on something like that in fact you don't even want to paint your forks you know that slide up and down into those sliders because that's not good for your seals if you ever think of doing that so uh anyway what was that thing i was going to talk about oh yeah i know okay may i say that this motorcycle right here has in a year's time made quite the fool out of me not that it's the motorcycle's fault like i say it's usually the guy who owns it but it, it's really not the bike it's me it's just me not knowing what i have or how to have it so i'll tell you what ever since i brought this motorcycle home and that day when i was out for a ride and i did that first video where uh, i broke down now i know why they're called trouble heads yeah i bought a new battery for this bike and uh apparently it's not charging you would think when you get going down the road the stator and regulator would do its job and then uh, i realized that i put my regulator wire on the wrong side of the battery thinking that i well not really thinking at all stupid me um didn't realize that was a regulator wire i thought it was some kind of negative ground wire for something so i stuck it on the you know negative post anyway there's that and then i'm riding again another day and then i broke down right and i blamed it on the electronic ignition that was in there but I'm pretty sure that electronic ignition that's in there, that single fire ultimate ignition, that's the only culprit I can think of as to why the darn thing quit on me. And then I made a whole video about that, about me putting points in there, because the points is obviously more reliable, that is if you know how to maintain them, rather than an electronic ignition, that once it quits, it just quits. Okay, so I made that video. And then um, at the end of that video, you know where I'm doing the motor vlog and I said you guys be good to yourselves and thanks a lot I shut off the camera on on my way home it quit on me again just like it did on the video before that where I broke down or broke down so I'm on the side of the road going come on really and then I thought about it I reached over I hit the petcock onto reserve and the thing fired right back up and when I broke down I didn't put any gas in between it those intervals into the bike so I ran out of gas silly me you know see and uh what else happened oh yeah well i noticed that there was a severe lack of horsepower with points in it too and with good conscience i decided that you know since there's nothing wrong with that electronic ignition i went ahead and put the electronic ignition back in there figuring that would give it some more oh oh may i say that time when i also broke down or broke down it was also the time when my starter stuck and did a number on my ring gear okay now i got that out of the way now anyway i'm riding around with my electronic ignition and got a new starter clutch gear on there i've got a new jack shaft got a new solenoid a new uh, starter motor and ever since that incident where the starter stuck so then i'm hitting the starter hitting the starter i'm in the middle of the highway uh just barely rolling and finally it starts to start and all of a sudden the starter won't disengage and there wasn't a darn thing i could do about it the kill switch wouldn't shut it off turning the power switch off power kept going to the starter and so it just kept on spinning over and over and over again until it died. It would just engage the, the starter gear, I mean the clutch gear, and then it would disengage and grind. And I was like, oh, well, there must be really something wrong with that ring gear because it was really messed up. What you guys saw in a previous video that that ring gear was pretty messed up. Okay, so there's that, but I just figured the heck with it. I'll just endure it for a while and maybe fix it later, which is the video you're seeing now. So while I was riding around, with the electronic ignition i kept saying that I, man ever since i put that 48 tooth sprocket on the rear wheel going from 51 it just seems underpowered compared to when it had the 51 you know just taking off because i could hear the valves clattering and it was really bad when the misses and i would get on there well as in the video you're watching now i noticed that after i got done doing the little motor vlog that you saw earlier in this video i got home and i went to hit the button the starter button again for whatever reason and it did the same thing the starter clutch gear came out and engaged the ring gear <laughs> and then jumped out and started grinding. I was like, what in the world is going on here? But when it did it, I mean, I immediately let off the button and I happened to get a glimpse and notice there was a little bit of smoke lingering around the air breather. And that made me realize this thing is out of time. The engine was literally kicking back at the starter, just like in that one video when I put the points in where it was kept kicking back at me when I was trying to kickstart this thing. Oh. 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 
That made me do my homework, and wouldn't you know it, the manual that I have doesn't have the correct information in there, or really the information on how to static time this engine. And apparently in 1978, even in 79, you never look for the line anymore, the vertical line on the flywheels to get top dead center, at least that's what I have discovered. I look for the dot that comes after the line. I even put a screwdriver down in the cylinder just to see it come up, and it came up as the dot was starting to appear. So what I really had to do is that I had to rotate the engine until the dot came up on top dead center, but stop right when it starts to appear in the hole. And then go and set my static timing, you know, according to whatever unit I've got. And I did it. I locked it down. I got it up to 2200 RPMs too, which, which is what you want to be at. And I hit it with a strobe light. I found that the line was kind of far to the front and I rotated it and got it directly in the middle of the hole just like the manual says to do when you strobe time one of these motorcycles. I didn't know to do that. I mean, as far as the static timing. But anyway, I got it right there in that window and shut the bike down, cleaned everything up. And when I hit the starter button, it didn't uh, disengage and start grinding. In fact, it didn't even hardly uh, turn over much. It was like one revolution and then boom, it fired right up. And when I took it for a ride, it had just as much get up and go as my soft tail does. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So that was pretty cool. And I would take it for a ride right now, but it's raining pretty good outside. So you guys would just have to take my word for it on that. But one thing I am gonna try was something I was so tickled about. Watch this. Maybe I just got lucky the first two times I did this, or maybe I did something right. Pass is on. Pull the choke. Ignition. <laughs> and that was my problem the whole time when I was trying to kickstart this thing in that video when I put the points in there. I wasn't properly static timed and, I, and my timing wasn't right. So apparently the timing is crucial if you want to have a kickstart motorcycle. But that engine was cold and that's the third time of me trying it, kickstarting it that is. I mean I can't be any happier than that. I mean it didn't even kick back at me. So there's that. I thought maybe I'd update you guys on that on how this motorcycle has made a fool of me this whole time in a year's time, but it really hasn't. I've just learned a lot. And I mean, I was really ready to give up on this thing, but I wouldn't give up. I mean, I was thinking like, maybe I'll just melt this thing down and make a different shovel head out of it or something, that one that works right. That's that motorcycle over there. And like I said, I'm really interested in getting into this thing right here. So until then guys, you know the drill. You guys get the rubber side down and you be good to yourselves. Thanks a lot.